Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and welcome to this week's edition of the Black Financial and Fraud Report with Bill Black, who joins us now from Kansas City, Missouri, where he teaches economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white-collar criminologist, a former financial regulator, and author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks again for joining us, Bill. Thank you. So, what caught your attention this week? Uh, Follow-ups and feedback to the Frontline special, The Untouchables, on the failure not only to prosecute but to even investigate the elite uh, banksters who caused the ongoing crisis. And so the following things have happened. Uh, Lanny Brewer, uh, the head of the criminal division and the most outspoken proponent of Too Big to Prosecute, has um, unexpectedly resigned. It's possible they've been planning it, but that wasn't public. Uh, so people are speculating whether he's doing so in response to the heavy criticisms he received in the Frontline documentary. And the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency responded to a um, written article that the uh, Frontline did in conjunction uh, with the uh, broadcast, uh, and that uh, writing quoted me, and that's what the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency focused on. Uh, they said that uh, it was ridiculous uh, to uh, make a, a comparison between the 30,000 criminal referrals by the Office of Thrift Supervision back during the savings and loan crisis and the zero criminal referrals by the Office of Thrift Supervision in the current crisis because that didn't count criminal referrals that the associations, the savings and loans made. Of course, savings and loans don't make criminal referrals against their CEOs. So I had a bit of fun uh, responding to that. Uh, but the, the OCC response in essence says uh, that there were no criminal referrals because there were no crimes. Uh, so again, this is the uh, virgin crisis. Uh, theory of life. Now, the second thing is a commentary in uh, The Economist, uh, of course, a uh, generally conservative uh, but uh, intelligent news magazine um, about uh, commerce. And it, uh, it, it, you know, if you didn't have this, you'd have to create it in The Onion uh, as satire. Uh, this column says that the real problem with fraud uh, in the current crisis is the victims, right? Uh, the victims uh, allowed themselves to be defrauded, and therefore it's important uh, not to have prosecutions because this way victims will learn that they have to protect themselves. Well, I, I, would, think, uh, I, I would think con men all over the world would be happy with that uh, guideline. Well, as I said, uh, it really belongs in the onion, the satirical <laughs> magazine, but but no, <laughs> uh, the economist uh, lacks any sense of irony and actually does say uh, that you should blame the victims of the fraud uh, as the principal folks that you should blame out of this crisis. And the guy has this weird uh, historical um, uh, analogy to um, Athens back in the Peloponnesian Wars and such that is of stunning irrelevance. So I'm spending some amount of time uh, preparing a new response to that one. But the third one uh, is uh, Iglesias, uh, who has written a column in which he said, well, it's too bad that Frontline uh, seems to have been successful uh, and that the populists are winning. He calls them the populists. Uh, in this criticism of uh, Geithner and uh, Holt Holder, the attorney general, and Lanny Brewer, uh, still the uh, head of the criminal division, and that we really should be probably applauding them because it was essential if you're going to bail out the biggest banks that you not allow any prosecutions. Because if you had allowed any prosecutions, then the banks would have been driven by prosecutions back into insolvency. So you see, really, you have to make sure, this is even worse than blaming the victims in the way, you have to make sure that the victims get no recovery 
from the frauds because if the victims got recovery, well, the victims suffered some, such massive losses, roughly $20 trillion loss in wealth that it would bankrupt the fraudulent banks. And of course, we can't allow that. So we have to make sure that we have uh, no prosecutions because otherwise it would be illogical. And uh, Iglesias is not uh, someone who uh, is familiar with regulation or economics or finance, um, but uh, he does have an undergraduate education in uh, philosophy, is philosophy major. and. Uh, this column, like a s earlier one he did in 2001 that was somewhat similar, uh, are remarkable in that they are utterly devoid of any discussion of ethics uh, or what it would mean in terms of a democracy if you could have the most elite institutions gain a competitive advantage over honest institutions by fraud, become so massively large that they couldn't be closed down and would have dominant crony capitalism power over the government that would lock in uh, their uh, hege hegemony uh, forever, uh, essentially. Well, let, let, so, let, me some uh, let me give some defense of Lenny Brewer. Uh, they were handed That's this. That's good issue. because he needs a defense. Yeah, I know. Lawyer. Well, I'm, a, I'm an obvious likely defender of, of, of them. But, but the, the, the argument would go this way that, you know, the way American economy has worked over this whole last century has given rise to a situation with these massive financial monopolies. And, and, th and it is to a large extent a big confidence game in, in every sense of the word. And if you start arresting some of these CEOs, at, especially at a time that so, was so precarious in 08, 09, and is still in reality very precarious, even though they don't want to admit it, that you might unravel the whole financial system again because nobody's going to trust anybody again and it becomes chaotic and everybody pulls their money out. And, and, and that, you know, if you're not willing to go that other step, which is to create some kind of public banking alternative, then you are left with the situation that you can't prosecute these guys because it's, it's just too much risk to the whole global system. Well, as someone who actually was a defense lawyer, I would suggest uh, continuing your current career. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so the logic of that is that we, the only way to maintain trust in an institution that is uh, fundamentally fraudulent is to make sure you never investigate and develop the facts that it is fraudulent. And if people are successfully deceived, then they will have trust in the organization. Well, isn't that the logic that they're following? <laughs> it is pretty close. That's what I've uh, often said that, uh, you, like, you know, seriously, folks, your idea is that you're going to achieve financial stability by leaving the felons in charge of our largest banks. That is really creative finance. Thanks very much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.